Hi folks, welcome back to our channel. In our previous video, we talked about a new program for Ukrainians to get PR in Canada. And today, we'll show you how to fill out the application itself. It's going to be a very detailed step-by-step -step guide and it can be useful to anyone submitting a PR application online. So without further ado, let's get into it. We are Nathan Stepa, your smart travel duo. First, you'll need to go to Permanent Residence Portal. When you scroll down the page, you will see the login information, or if you don't have your login, simply click Create an account. Here, put in your email and create a strong password. Once this is done, you will be emailed a verification code. Copy that code and paste it in the field on the website. Now you've completed your registration and you've created your account on the permanent residency portal. You can now log in. You'll be redirected to the main page that has information about all the applications you can submit here. For the purposes of this video, we'll be submitting a permanent residency application. Start new application. On the main page, you will be prompted to choose the program under which you're applying. In our case, don't choose family and click other. Further on, you will have to choose Ukrainian family reunification. Application name field is a free format, so name it any way you like. Here you'll have to set up basic profile settings like your preferred language of communication, your family name as it appears in your passport and other documents, your given name, date of birth, and mailing address. If you're applying with a spouse or any other dependent, you can add them here. Otherwise, click save and continue. And this is the main page of your online portal. On the left, you see all the application forms that you have to submit. They are required. When you scroll down, you will see the links to start working on the digital forms. To start, simply click edit. The first one is a general application form for Canada. Choose your language, mark whether you require an interpreter or not, and state place where you live right now. Your personal details are already pre-filled from the first page. Your UCI number is usually created when you apply for a visa or any other immigration application. If you don't have it, simply skip this field. Fill out your physical characteristics. Birth information like place of birth and country. Your citizenships. Ukraine doesn't allow dual citizenship, so you will only mark Ukraine here. But if you have any other passports, you have to mark them here. Mark your current country of residence and choose your status. This can be a student, a temporary visitor, or a worker if you have a valid work permit. The dates are to specify from what time and until what time your status is valid. You can find this information on your work permit. Date and place of your last entry to Canada is usually stamped in your passport. Here you can specify the actual port of entry, like Pearson International Airport.
If you've resided in any other country than Canada and your native country for more than six months, you need to specify them here. Choose your marital status and continue. Your contact information. Here you need to specify your address and your primary phone number that you can be reached at. Confirm whether you want to be contacted by email and continue. If you have a valid passport or travel document, specify the details on this page. For national identity documents, it can be your internal passport for Ukrainian. You don't really need to specify it here, but if you choose to do so, that will just be another helpful piece of information for your application. Education and occupational details. Here you need to specify the highest level of education that you have. It may be a PhD, master's degree, high school diploma and the number of years you've spent on your studies, including school and university. Also mark your current and intended occupation. Specify your native language. And also specify whether you can speak in English, French or both. And that's it, you've completed your first form and you see it check marked green as completed. We can proceed to the next form. This is for additionally family members information. First section includes yourself. You need to specify the country or territory of birth, your marital status and the email that can be used to contact you. You also need to specify the place where you were born. If you're not applying with spouse or common law partner, you need to fill out not applicable in any of the blank spaces provided. Fill out the information for your mother. Same applies to your father. Click save and continue. If you don't have children, put not applicable in first blank field. Press continue. For the purposes of this program, we have a sibling that is actually our Canadian relative that we're applying through. Specify their relationship and their full name, including their name in the native language. Specify their date of birth, country of birth, and marital status. Also provide their contact information like email and address. Click save and continue. This form is now complete and you can move on to the next one. As you can see, it is also now checked marked green. We're moving on to the third form, which is a background declaration or Schedule A. This form includes all the personal details about yourself, like full name, and in this case, you will also need to provide it in your native language. As you can see, some of the information is already pre-filled. Complete personal details for your father. And 
and the same for your mother. You can now save and continue. Here you need to answer yes or no questions about any of the criminal convictions, refugee status, not being admissible to the country, etc. Please answer these questions truthfully because IRCC usually already has your background information. If you've answered yes to any of these questions, please make sure to provide more details in the field below. Once you're done, click save and continue. Next section is your education. Here, provide the number of years you've spent in your primary school, secondary school, and university or college. Further on, provide the years and months that you've spent in this educational institution. Also, the name of your school and the city and country it's located. Specify the type of diploma you received and your field of studies. If you have more than one educational institution, you can click Add New One and fill out similar information. Once you're done, click save and continue. Next one is your personal history. Here you need to specify what occupation you had in the last 10 years and who was your employer. If you have several employers, you can always click add another and continue. In this section, you're asked to provide any associations and memberships you might have had, like unions, political parties, if you had any government positions, if you served in the military, etc. If these sections don't apply to you, you can always write not applicable in the blank space. Next section is regarding your address of residence in the last 10 years. It is already pre-filled with the recent one being your Canadian address you provided earlier. Make sure to add all the addresses you've resided permanently for more than six months in the last 10 years. have completed your Schedule A and we're down to the last form. This form is regarding your travel history. You need to fill out all the countries you visited in the last 10 years. If you haven't traveled, you can choose that check mark. Specify the year and the months that you've been traveling, your destination city and country, and the length of time you spend there. Specify the purpose and add another trip if that is required. Click save and continue. Next, you will be asked to provide similar information for your spouse but if you don't have a spouse, just write not applicable in the first blank field. Same applies to the children. If you don't have any, put NA in the blank field. Complete and return to application. Now you have all the four digital forms filled out and we can move on to PDF forms. PDF forms are provided further down and you can click download to have access to the PDF form itself. 
The first PDF form you need to fill out is the statutory declaration attesting to your relationship with a Canadian citizen or permanent resident. This is a very important form for this application. It needs to be attested by a Canadian authority. So there is a section on the second page that needs to be filled out by the authority representative. So you actually need to print out this form and have it stamped by them. The second form is your document checklist. That is a very handy tool to check yourself whether you've submitted all the necessary forms and documents. Make sure to check mark everything that you are submitting with this application and include this in your application portal. Once you're done, you can upload the file here. Make sure to follow the naming convention of all the files that you're attaching. They have to include your full name and the name of the form or the document that you're attaching. If you want to provide additional forms, they can be found in this section. Also, other supporting documents can be found here. Make sure to upload your travel documents and passports, your photos, birth certificate, and proof of your status in Canada. Additional supporting documents can be found in this section, and they may include, for example, a police certificate. Once you're done, click Upload. The final section is the fee payment. You need to pay for your application during the submission. Make sure to answer the evaluation questions to get the right form for payment. In this case, you're applying for permanent residency, you are choosing the pathway for Ukrainians, and you are applying alone. We can choose pay now or pay later. And if you've already paid for biometrics, you can click no. And here's the summary of your fees. You can pause on this section to read it in full details. Click login and pay. And once you have your payment confirmation, make sure to upload it in the section. Final step is the declaration of consent. Make sure to read through all these steps. In the end, you'll be asked to write your full name as a signature. And that's it. All of your web forms and PDF forms are now submitted and you can see it on the left side with all the green check marks. And that's it. Now you're ready to submit your PR application. We hope this comprehensive guide helped you get a better understanding of PR submission process. If you have any further questions, feel free to drop us a line in the comments down below. To get notified about our new videos, hit that subscription button and notification bell to stay up to date. Thank you for watching, until next time.